Nestle says that one in every five cups of coffee consumed around the world is created by them. And many of those coffee drinks are developed at this site in Orb, Switzerland, a half hour's drive away from the main R&D center. This location was also the birthplace of the Nespresso, Virtuo, and Dolce Gusto coffee systems. And the teams here continue to innovate, developing ideas such as a connected machine, countless drinks products from freeze-dried instant to plant-based powdered lattes, and the recently launched biodegradable cardboard coffee pods. Making the big decisions about our daily cup is Nestle's head of coffee, David Rennie. We delivered over 8% uh, organic growth for the fiscal year 2022, continuing a very strong run of results for coffee. Uh, we're one of the top performing uh, divisions in the coffee sector, and that's no surprise because the coffee market globally continues to grow at roughly 5% organic growth every year. So our role within the company is very clear. Coffee is a growth category with lots of potential for future growth. High on Nestle's agenda is mitigating the impacts of climate change on its coffee farms. There is a real existential threat to our coffee business if we do not tackle climate change. Uh, many estimates have roughly half of the world's coffee producing areas under threat of extinction by 2050 if we don't take action now to address climate change. So for us, it's a real imperative to, uh, to tackle this. And we've got uh, a number of major programmes across the company that we've announced and that we're working on. The Nescafe Plan 2030, our AAA programme on Nespresso. All of these programmes absolutely dedicated to getting the right conditions for coffee production going forward. Back at the R&D Centre in Lausanne, I met Jerome Diekman, who leads Nestle's Institute of Agricultural Sciences. We identify, screen and develop new uh, science-based solutions to increase the nutritional value of our raw materials, the sensorial qualities of it, and also at the same time we reduce uh, the carbon footprint of our sourcing. Talk to us about the work your team is doing in coffee. Within coffee, there's so much natural variety still that by selecting the right varieties and by breeding new varieties out of that, we can make huge progress in yield. And we have some examples, Ruby 1 and Ruby 2 are two of our Robusta varieties where we've been able to roll out these varieties and allow farmers to produce about 50% more coffee with the same inputs. Um, and at the same time, of course, if you produce more coffee from one plant, that also reduces the emissions related to that coffee production. And more importantly, it also gives the farmer additional income. What makes the perfect coffee plant? The perfect coffee plant is one that not only produces very well with limited inputs, but also one that is uh, resistant to uh, climatic adversity and uh, to, uh, to disease. Most importantly, of course, though, we want to make sure that the cup quality, right, so what you actually drink, is fantastic, <laughs> differentiated, and quite often new. And that's mm. also part of the work we do. So how do you go about breeding the perfect coffee plant? It may disappoint you, but we <laughs> mostly use traditional breeding practices where we take the pollen from, uh, from one coffee plant to fertilize the, another plant. And that is still very much the basic method we use. We have, of course, the coffee genome, and that has allowed us to identify specific markers for sensorial quality, disease resistance, and for uh, drought resistance. So we use those as well, which allows us to speed up uh, the breeding program. And then we have a, a large variety of coffee plants, and we have got that all um, into a digital database. And basically what it does, it combines the phenotypic, so what the plant looks like, and okay what the coffee tastes like, with the genotypic characteristics of the plant. Um, and again, that allows us to, for specific situations, specific areas, climatic conditions, sensorial qualities, to select the right plants and to crossbreed them to mm. come to new varieties. Are you using artificial intelligence as part of this process? We are uh, using artificial intelligence by looking at the various uh, um, genome libraries and also our database Central Park allows us to, to mix and match for specific questions that we have for specific environments and for specific taste characteristics. Mm -hmm.